Hey friends, welcome back to my channel for another video. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tina and I'm the creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Blessed and Beautiful Homestead. So I'm out here sitting in the shade today because it is blazing hot here in the beautiful state of Virginia. And I thought that I would take you guys along with me today. Um, I've got the sheep nibbling at my jeans here. I thought it would be fun to take you guys along with me. We are going to be picking up some fresh beef that we purchased from a local farmer. So about three weeks ago, we purchased half a cow. They have red Angus that they grow on pasture. A lot of you have reached out to me in the past and mentioned how much you want a homestead and you really want to um, get into this lifestyle, growing your own food, having chickens, learning how to can and preserve and all of these things. And for whatever reason, maybe you're not able to do that yet. Maybe you don't have a property where you can have those kinds of animals. Maybe you don't have the time to spend doing that. For whatever reason, you have not embarked yet on this journey of homesteading. So I wanted to come on today to encourage you that even if you don't yet have a homestead of your own, you can still source local fresh homegrown food for your family table. So today we are going to head over to this beautiful farm. She has almost 600 acres here in Virginia and her property is magical. You go into these gates, she's got rivers running through it. I mean, it's just so pretty and welcoming. So I can't wait to show that to you guys. And another thing that we do other than sourcing beef, now that our homestead is um, one acre, we don't have the 18 acre farm that we used to have. We can't grow our own beef here. So sourcing it locally from a farmer is a great option. Another thing that we do is we are a part of a cow share program. So in the state of Virginia, it is illegal to sell raw cow's milk that is not pasteurized. And we, um, but we are allowed to have a cow share program where you essentially own a share of the cow. So you're allowed to go and partake in the milk of that cow since you are part owner of the cow. So once a week we go to another local farm and we pick up one gallon of fresh raw cow's milk. Now you guys know we've got sheep here on the property um, but we just recently started our flock this year and we're just gearing up to having a dairy animal again. So to supplement that beautiful fresh sheep milk that we do get from our Delilah girl here, we do partake in a cow share program and we get that one gallon of milk per week from the farmer. So so I love fresh raw cow's milk, um, all that cream. I scrape that off sometimes, I make butter out of it. Um, if we don't drink all of it in that week, I use what's left and I make yogurt. So we have a lot of fun with it and um, that's just two ways that we source some of the homegrown food from local farmers. I also keep my eyes open and I'm part of several Facebook groups here with local farmers that have fresh strawberries that we go pick every year. You know, we don't have big crops here on our one acre homestead. We just have a, a small family garden with the greenhouse and now the hoop house. So if I wanna do a lot of preserving and I wanna make up a bunch of sauerkraut and can it, um, I typically go to one of these local farmers and I purchase a bunch of cabbage from them. So it's locally grown, it is chemical free, and it is much better in my opinion than getting it from the grocery store. So I just wanted to come on today and encourage you um, if you want to have homegrown food for your table and you don't yet have a homestead it's possible and even if you have a homestead you guys we can't do everything right I don't think that anybody is 100% self-sufficient so there's still gonna be things that we have to outsource I am a huge advocate for our small local businesses and farms. You guys, big agriculture is taking over and all over our country, the small farmers and their families are getting pushed out of business. So I am 100% in supporting these small farms. They work hard and they deserve to have that business for the work that they do. So today I'm gonna show you how we do some of that. So let's head over to the farm. Each week I take two clean half gallon jars to the farm and they are labeled with my name. And we trade these out, we leave these there and we pick up our milk. I just grab a simple ice chest to put the jars in. Simple as that.
All right, we got the milk. All right, so we picked up our milk and now we're heading to River Road Farm to pick up our beef. So if you have never ordered beef from a farmer and you're not sure how in the world you're supposed to have the butcher cut up the meat for you, the farmer will usually help you with that. They're gonna give you what's called a cut sheet and it's gonna break it down all the parts of the cow and how you want your meat cut up, like your roast, your sirloins, ground beef, and all those details. So you can either ask the butcher to help you with that um, or you can ask the farmer and they can help you as well. So here we are at River Road Farm and we are loading our ice chests with our fresh beef. Let me see some of that, Lex. So it comes all packaged, ready to go with their farm logo on it. I wanna get that beef. Ooh, look at that. What do we got here? It's a beef brisket. Ooh, yeah. All right. Can you help Sissy load it up? Yeah. We've got London broil, beef tri tip, and we've got lots and lots of ground beef in here. I know, isn't that exciting? Yeah, it's just good. a bowl. I'll just load it. Is this a bowl? Yes. What's it out there, Pete? Turn it over, let's see what it is. Beef. New York strip. Oh, that's what it is. Beef brisket. Beef brisket. Beef brisket. Beef brisket. Beef brisket. Beef
these flanks. Alright you guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video with me and the kids today. Little Parker helped me with some of my video recording. Obviously I couldn't hold the camera and lift an ice chest at the same time. So, <laughs> but we did it together as a team and we've got a full freezer of beef to go with our other freezer that's full of meat birds that we butchered last week and you guys there's nothing like it. So I just wanted to encourage you again, if you want to eat local homegrown food that is not genetically modified, that is not full of chemicals and harmful pesticides. Do a little research in your area because there are a lot of local farmers that would love to share their harvest with you. So thanks for hanging out with us today, you guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and become a part of our homestead family. Click that like button for me and we will see you very soon.